Okay, we're looking at SQL Data Generator by Redgate right now, and this is the, the interface that you're presented with when you first bring it up. Um, you know, the easiest, what you do is you start with a new project, and let's see if my database is actually in the drop-down list, and it's not. So, that, I think I'm on SQL authentication here. Okay, so I've got my data gen database, and that's that's really all there is to it. I mean, you can you can have some other some other options here, but you know, if all you want to do is uh, connect to a database and leave the the default options, and you've got that right there. You can change your default number of batches. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it comes up. It's gonna read everything it needs to read out of the database. Now, this is actually a little bit slower than than uh, creating the data itself since I've only got two tables in this database as you can see. <clears throat> so what's pretty cool here is that it automatically has a knowledge of um, of relationships and I think there's a relationship here let me see uh, well all the same even if there's not it doesn't really matter so in order to in order to, to build strings here, you can come to the individual. Now, this is going to be a uh, an ID field, so there's nothing you can do about that. But first names down here, it has names first dot text, and you pull that right from here. You can get names first female, names first male, uh, just mixed first names, and you'll see that right here. And you see how here it's got the Wendy 17 and the the Sonya 2. Well, that's because it's got this guy right here. This is a regular expression. So if you take that out of there, then that would get rid of all of the all of the numbers in there because nobody's named Arturo Seven Eleven. There's no way, right? So same thing with the addresses. <clears throat> You've got here a, a string builder of different addresses in here that you can see, uh, and it's got a file list that you can do. So, and there's not an there's not actually a uh, an address list in here, um, so to speak, but you can do it. Okay, got interrupted there for a second. Okay, but you can pick which generator you want here. So you can pick from any of these guys here. Um, that's obviously geographical, but you could, you know, pick from generic, um, a SQL statement, or a text shuffler, or you know, some sort of weighted list or a CSV or, you know, a file list. I mean, you know, you can do almost anything you need to here um, for an key manual generator, which you won't use here, that's for sure, because it's an address. And no, and hopefully nobody uses a, an address as a foreign key. But uh, <clears throat> so you can do the same thing with phone here. You have the regular expression that's pretty easy, and you can put it in a certain format. And it, you notice how it highlights the column down here so that you you know which one you're looking at so you can see the data here. That's good stuff. State. Same thing. I got state code list, but I could easily uh, I could easily do a full state name if I wanted to. But that probably wouldn't be a good idea since my uh, see US state right here. That wouldn't be a good idea since my column is character two. That probably wouldn't be a very good idea. And zip, same thing. And you see, I've got some nice zips here, uh, which I could also change to zip code plus four, uh, or you know, if I wanted to import another one, I think they've got some on CodePlex that do stuff like that. So you see here, we've got all types of, you know, shopping. You've got descriptions and product names. You've got uh, payments. You got credit card dates and credit card numbers, uh, businesses all types of things in here that you can use to populate your data and this is all pretty realistic looking data I mean look at these you know look at these addresses there's nothing wrong with that aside from you know these names having numbers in them you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if I wanted to get rid of that in the first name right there I get rid of that in the first name if I wanted to get rid of that in the last name then I'll get rid of that in the last thing. Now you've got some really, really good 
first names and last names. You've got really good phone numbers, and you see there's a null here every now and then. You can, you can cut those nulls out. You can disallow nulls in every single field if you want to. <coughs> And it'll disallow and it'll disallow nulls. It's really pretty easy. You can set unique values. Uh, so then, when I come here to the child table, you notice how this is set to the foreign key generator. That's because I have a foreign key set, and I say repeat repeat key values at random. Um, I want that to be a a many to one relationship, right? And this column right here. <coughs> I've just got it set for a, a random generator. I mean, you can see it's because I've, I've got a pretty big text field there. I forget exactly what it is. Uh, it's Varkar 100. So, you know, if I want to do a regular generator, let's say, let's go over here to, oh, I don't know, let's do credit cards. Why not, right? Let's do credit card numbers. There. So I'll generate some credit card numbers. Uh, allow null values. No, let's not put any null values in there. And here's where you set this right here. You're gonna have uh, when the when the data is invalid you can either skip a row, you can stop generation, or you can truncate the data. We're just gonna skip it because that's fine with us. Uh, and this is one thing that I think is really cool here. You can set it by num numeric value, proportion of table, or by generation time. <clears throat> And I think generation time is actually pretty cool because there's sometimes when I may only want, you know, however much data I can get in there in two hours is how much data I want to put in there. I have no idea how much that is, but just pump away until there's two hours. Now, I, I do see that there could be some room for some advancement here. Uh, I mean, you could, you could really get some, some nice stuff here, but this is a really good start. And proportion of table, we're actually going to do that here in a minute. So my table is the master table. So we're going to put, say, oh, I want 200,000 rows. And then for the child table, I want that to be a proportion of the table of my table. And what percent do I want it to be? Let's say 150%. So when I do that, I don't want it to skip a row. That's fine. So I've got 150%. Uh, and there we go. We should be good. So all I should have to do now is generate the data. It's going to tell me what it's going to do. And it's generating for the primary table first. And you see that's 200,000 rows. And look how fast it's pumping through that data. That's actually pretty fast. And this is going across a wireless network to the server in my lab. Seven ninety-eight. It's creeping a little here. It's probably doing some. Uh, uh, it's probably doing some committing and some log truncating at this point. Oh, it's on the child table. Okay, that's the problem. So, okay, now we've generated for for uh, both tables, and I've got two hundred thousand and three hundred thousand. Really, in just a few seconds. I mean, that was. That was pretty impressive speed. That's not bad at all um, for something like that. So I'll close that, and then I can go look at the database. I, I don't have to look at the database. Oops. I don't have to look. Stop that. Because I know exactly how much data is there, but I will anyway if I say select o dot table 200,000 and then my child table oops I get 300,000 <clears> so that's 150 percent right I mean if I'd chosen 200 percent it would have given me four so that's that those are the basics of, of using uh, Redgate's data generator. It's it's a nice little tool. It's got a nice little interface. Um, it's easy enough to work, and I haven't gotten you know really complicated with it to see, you know, to see it pump out two or three or five hundred million rows yet. <clears throat> so, 
you know, we'll see how that works. And I'm going to download some of the code from from CodePlex and plug it in there, and I'll get some more complicated databases and and see how it works and start setting up some different relationships and see how well it works there. But you know, from you know, if you just want to want to pump some data in there, you know, that looks really good, <clears throat> you know, this there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, look at this data in this table. This data looks great. There's nothing wrong with this, and you can feed it from a database as well um, <clears throat> you know you could you can have it look up the values randomly from you know a, a, a column in another database if you've got you know real data that you want to intermingle in with some of that stuff so you know it, it, it's flexible enough it's not the most flexible data gener generator I've ever seen but it's only version one and it's a really good start I, I expect good things from this Anyway, that's, uh, that's the data generator I've been looking at lately. I've got a couple more that I'll probably walk you through uh, here pretty soon. But for right now, um, I like the tool, and for, like, what is it, roughly 300 bucks, I think it's a good buy.